everybody, Beth here from Access Paranormal for this week's I Want to Know, which is all about a very intriguing subject, as most are with this particular series, which is about stigmata. Now quickly before I go into it, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody. I know that last week I wasn't able to, I completely lost my voice. It was on its way out from the previous weekend and it just disintegrated and got worse and then I got the head cold going on and everything. So I have a little bit of it left, so luckily it's, it's making its way out. Elvis is leaving the building and I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, than I did this time last week. So thank you for your patience with that as well. Now, of course, this is, again, as like I said, it's um, a lot of subjects with I Want to Know is very, very intriguing. And this one has intrigued me quite a bit. And thank you to the person that did send that through as well. I really appreciate it. Finally getting around to it too, which is good. <laughs> um, yeah, stigmata. Okay, so what is stigmata? Now, I posted up a little something on Facebook before for this video, and you'll see a picture of, of a guy with his hands up, and you'll notice there were marks on his hand. Stigmata is a, a phenomena where people have wounds that appear on their body in specific places mysteriously. That's the biggest thing. This is not something that they have apparently done to themselves or, or, or have had someone else do to them. It's something that's quite mysterious. Um, it's, it's on the palms of their hands. So both palms, there's a wound there and there's a wound there. Uh, there's wounds across the forehead as well, dotted usually. Uh, there can sometimes be wounds across the torso as well. Um, and also, it's actually more like a singular one, apparently. And also wounds on the feet. And you don't want me to stick your feet in the camera, but you can understand what it is. So these wounds are quite interesting where they are placed because they are in symbolization of the crucifixion of Christ. So the, the nailing of the body, hands up there, the piercing of the side, the crown of the thorns, and of course with the feet as well. So that's what makes this particular phenomenon really, really interesting. So that's one thing. Also, when people experience this and have experienced it, it's actually quite painful. So you can imagine open wounds being, you know, suddenly appearing and, and out of no reason and being quite painful uh, when it happens. Um, one thing I noticed with my, my research with this particular subject was the fact that there wasn't any known cases about up until maybe about a thousand AD. So considering how important, you know, from, from a religious perspective, this was, it wasn't until at least possibly a thousand years AD that there were actually reported cases of it. So I thought that was a very interesting uh, fact to come across um, in my initial research. Also, um, there, now there was, a, there was one guy in around the 11th century that was rumored to have, well, he, he went to court and said, I'm the son of God. I've got these wounds in, in very sacred places. Um, I believe I'm the son of God. So, of course, the courts of, at the time around the 11th century So oh, really, you know, we've got to put you through um, the judicial system to find out if that's legit and all that kind of stuff. As you can imagine in that day and age just uh, what a claim that would have been to, to, to say that, you know, this is who I am. So, of course, you know, people are quite angry that you, you would claim this, you know, this is this is rude. Um, but of course, uh, I'm not sure what the, the founding findings of that particular case was, but um, he was the first known um, rumoured case of, of what could have been, what would look like uh, stigmata. But a couple of years later, there was a, Frank, a, 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 a monk called St. Francis of Assisi, and he said, I have, I'm showing signs of stigmata. And so that was quite interesting to, to actually be the first case, the first monk as well, to, to claim to actually have these particular sacred wounds that would appear mysteriously as well. Now, most people, if you ever do a bit of research on this particular subject, will have heard of Pedro, um, Peo, sorry, Pedro, <laughs> Pedro Pio, I just insulted him and his entire family, Pedro Pio, uh, obviously Italian. Um, he uh, he started to actually, and this is more recent, so we're not talking 11th century here too, which is quite interesting. This He started to display signs around 1910, so it was last century. Uh, and as the years progressed now, he only had a few few areas where it would occur. But by the time it got to 1918, he had all five areas of the body displaying signs of stigmata. Um, it was another report was the fact that uh, it was said that he was known to fly. Um, another one was uh, that he, I think it was he was 
uh, would bilocate so obviously he would be seen in one area and seen in another area as well that was something too um he would also uh once when the wounds would appear he would smell like lilies um incense i think tobacco was something else that was reported as well so there you go um that's the only case i was able to come across that actually said there was an, a, a sense and a smell that would that was associated when the wounds would actually appear um, believe it or not, there actually were two popes around that time who were around him that didn't believe uh, his claims of being stigmatic. Uh, they said he, uh, I think, um, I'm trying to be as polite as possible, but I think they said he was a self-mutilating psychopath. Uh, and that was quoted uh, by one of them as well. So obviously uh, he, they didn't think he was sound of mind and he was obviously faking this and making it himself, which is a huge thing because um, it's such a sacred thing to have happen. Uh, and these guys were quite happy to say, no, it's not. It's a load of baloney, sir, as Judge Judy would say. Um, and it was not um, going to happen. So or it was not happening and it's not true. Um, he did die in 1968, uh, I think it was. Um, and the thing is, I found was quite interesting is before him, though, apart from the, the monk uh, prior, um, there was no other religious person that had actually claimed to have had this particular phenomena. But after that, there's been a few. So that's been quite an interesting fact is the fact because it's such a sacred type of um, wound to appear that only up until recently there's been priests that have claimed to have had it. So excuse me, <coughs> still dealing with this wonderful head cold that was gifted to me by my friends. So uh, <laughs> um, so that was something I found was quite interesting with that as well. Now, of course, there's a couple of other cases too. They're not all, all priests that have been involved in something like this. Um, there's been John... Sorry, uh, Johann Letzer, he was uh, he displayed signs of um, stigmata, and that was only in about sort of 15, uh, 1507, apparently. Um, there was Theresa Newman. Um, her case, again, was quite interesting because her, her wounds would only appear when uh, on Fridays. So I'm, I'm gathering uh, if there's a religious connection with that being Good Friday, the fact that, um, you know, those wounds would appear on Fridays only. Um, when there were people that were not part of her circle that would turn up to try and witness this, um, it never actually happened. So obviously something to keep in mind as well. So it's an interesting phenomenon, um, quite intense, if um, you would agree, and I would agree with that too. So of course, you know, being accessed paranormal and, and I want to know, we want to ask some kind of questions about this. So can, can something like this be actually real? Is this stuff real? Can it actually happen to somebody? Um, just like it is with all other subjects. Um, there was a guy called Ted Harrison, who was part of uh, the BBC that did some research for his story about probably 10 years ago. And he came across, um, he, when he did his initial research, he said there was probably about over 400 cases that he could find of it in, in that time period uh, since, since the first report. So that's, that's still quite small considering, but there is still enough information there to say, well, there's got to be something happening here. We don't know what it is, but people are reporting you know, wounds on, in, on specific parts of the body. So what's going down in Chinatown, right? Um, the cases would often come in um, fluctuations. So you'll get a whole, you know, group of, of cases coming in one quick time. And then, you know, there'll be a space of, of, of time where nothing would happen. So that was really interesting. That could be power of suggestion. We don't know. Um, but yeah, apparently it, it ebbs and flows quite a bit when, with uh, particular reported cases. Um, James Randi, as we know, uh, when asked about stigmata, he said, well, you know, we, we need to put somebody who's claiming to be stigmatic in a room um, and have them monitored 24-7 to see whether or not this stuff actually is happening, how it happens, how it eventuates, when does it actually unfold to, to be able to really ascertain whether or not this is something that could be legit. It's probably, you know, some really good common sense coming out uh, from that point of view. So, I, I yeah, yeah, as you can imagine, you need to put somebody in there 24-7 to find out because as we'll talk a bit about later, that the um, fact that uh, how the wounds appear has not actually been captured per se as yet. Um, the one other thing as well to keep in mind too, now this is the one I found really intriguing. As you'll see, that's the reason why I posted the picture of the, the old guy with his arms up in Facebook. For those who are watching on YouTube, apologies, I might see if I can try and post that picture as well underneath. But um, when he had his hands up, you'll notice that there was the dark circle in his palm. Now, for those who know um, of the crucifixion of Christ, you'll know that when he was nailed, it was through his wrist, not his palm. Reason being is if you were to do that, your body can't support its weight. 
it would, with all respect, it's a bit gruesome. Um, you, the nail would rip through, you'd fall. Um, here, you'd actually have the weight because you've got the, the tendons in your wrist. So if it's a true representation of Christ's crucifixion, it's actually in the wrong part of the arm. So that's the one thing that's really, really interesting uh, to keep in mind as well. Um, of course, there's there's uh, a lot of um, hesitation in dealing with something like this. So there's a lot of hesitation in, in um, trying to uh, ask questions about it for people who are stigmatic, particularly if they are of, of the church, because to to question somebody who is, is, is displaying signs of something quite sacred or considered sacred, you're kind of um, being rude. And that's by the polite way of putting it. It's very difficult to... to um, to question a man of the cloth, basically, um, and accuse them of, of basically being fraudulent. So that's probably why there's not been a lot of investigation in something like this, is because the fact that there that the people that often have displayed it, um, it's it's almost like saying, well, you're a liar um, by by you know be, having something quite what's considered quite sacred. That could be also that as well. Um, a lot of uh, in over the years prior to um, this last century. Uh, probably about eighty percent of people that actually did claim to have st um, stigmata or, st or are stigmatic were actually women. Um, that could also have been around the time of the fact that uh, women weren't uh, heard very often, so maybe it was a way for women to be heard. We don't know. That's just subjection, you know, conjecture. Um, or it could be the fact that um, also a lot of people that were claiming to have it were actually a uh, very strong Roman Catholic faith. So it was almost like we couldn't just be myself or my cat or the, the neighbour down the road who would suddenly start to appear it, that their beliefs had to be quite strong Roman Catholic beliefs in order for them to be able to, to have that, um, uh, you know, sort of a possibility of, of having um, stigmata appear with the person's body. Um, so, of course, you know, in true um, access, paranormal slash I want to know style, we obviously want to look at what the PAE of something like this. So, you know, we looked a bit about of what it is, what could, you know, be causing it, but also at the same time, what could be your PAE? What's your possible plausible explanation for something like this? So, okay, first thing, I, I said we have to rule it out, and it sounds horrid, but we've got to look at it from a fraud perspective. So we have to look at the types of people that are reporting it, um, there was a lady named Magda de la Cruz uh, back in um, the 16th century. She claimed to have um, stigmata for many, many years. And then afterwards actually turned around and said, no, um, I, I actually inflicted the wounds myself um, and I was making it all up. So there have been people in the past that have claimed to actually have it and then have retracted it. Um, there was also a guy called Johan um, Jetzer. And he was uh, somebody who also claimed to have poltergeist activity as well as stigmata as well. And he was later um, uh, confessed to actually faking the phenomena. And that was around about 1507 when he did that too. So you've got to think in mind, there are people that aren't going to be nice about it. There are going to be people that are going to be, you know, fraudulent with something like this or, or want to, to, you know, to, to create attention for, for that particular reason. Which then goes to our next point is maybe we need to look at the psychological condition of the people that are actually claiming these types of uh, phenomena, this type of phenomena. So it's things like, um, you know, low self-esteem. Do they have health problems as well? Do they want to be able to draw attention to themselves in a certain way? Um, you know, uh, do they have a tendency to, to, to self-harm or self-mutilate? Is that something that they are quite open to and quite um, easily able to do to their bodies? Um, you know, sometimes when people go into prayer, they go into altered states, they can go into an unconscious state as well. So by doing that, it's particularly with intensive prayer sessions, maybe that they're able to put themselves in a particular state where when they do that to themselves, they're not actually feeling it the same way that somebody else who was fully conscious. So these are just things to keep in mind. I'm not saying that everybody who's got stigmata is doing this, but we need to look at plausible explanations as well. Ways to explain this first before we even looking at the, a paranormal one. Also, of course, we're going to look at the psychosomatic type perspective. So the power of suggestion, like I mentioned before, that if it goes in fluctuations where there's lots of cases over a certain period of time and then suddenly it dies down, do, do people over a certain time find out other cases? And it's almost like a knock-on effect, a sort of domino effect where other people kind of feel that they're also experiencing it as well. And or, you know, there could be something else from another perspective we haven't even looked at yet that could be going on. So there's that too. Um, but it's good to keep in mind, I said there's uh, other ideas. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, whether or not you think it could be legit, what your thoughts are and how it could be explained in different ways as well. 
Um, there's also um, the movie uh, Stigmata, I think it was in 1999. I remember watching that and being freaked out from here to next year. Uh, it scared the bejeebies out of me. It was up there with spontaneous combustion, <laughs> hence the reason why it's probably followed soon after that particular topic. Um, but yeah, um, again, uh, you know, go and watch it. You know, obviously it's, it's a Hollywood movie and it's very exaggerated. Excuse <coughs> <coughs> Quietly dying, uh, quietly. But yeah, it's um, definitely something if you want to have a look at as well. Also, I'll post a link to a book. It's um, called um, Stigmata, The Destiny of a Question of Knowledge. So it's, it's all about factual information in cases and research regarding that. So I'll post the link to that as well if you are interested in that too. But again, use the comments section. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. I'll jump back. When I'm off this video, I'll jump back on and, and say hello and um, yeah, find out what your thoughts are on this and uh, whether or not you think it's a viable phenomena, what your thoughts are on is plausible explanations and if you know of anybody or if you've known anyone who's ever dealt with a case like that or quite similar to it as well thank you guys so much for watching uh for those thank you again for also watching the replay i really appreciate it take care and i'll see you next week